All right guys, welcome back. So in the past couple of tutorials, we've built out our application to a point where we can send a user an activation email. So now we are going to go ahead and activate this user. So for us to be able to activate it, we have already set out our view here. So right here, we need to get access to the token that the user is trying to send. So here I'm gonna define a token variable. So actually this should take in request too. So once we define a token, we can get this. You can see that it's the query program then token. So here we can do token will be equal to request dot gate dot gate the token. So now we can get it by the key, which will be token equals. So token. All right. So that should give us the token. So once we get it, we need to decode it and get which user was encoded in it. So if you see right here, when we say refresh token for user, it actually uses the, the user's ID to create the access tokens. So now once we have this, now we can try to decode it. So here I'm going to have a try accept. And when we install simple JWT module, it actually in, installs JWT. So here we can import JWT. So here in the try accept, you're going to try to decode this token. So you can do JWT to decode. When it's encoding, it actually uses the application secret key. So now we can pass token and then we need to pass our secret key. So in our settings.py, which is right here, you can see that we have a secret key and this is what's, what is used by the, by the make token for user. So here we can actually use our we need access to the signing in to the signing token so let's import the settings so from we can actually import the settings file but we can do similarly that from django.conf import settings so now here we can do settings dot this is gonna be this key. So this key is secret key. And of course we need to move this one to our environment. So dot secret key. So that's, if this is valid, that should give us our, our data, the data that was encoded in the token. So once we have that, I'm going to save that to a variable called payload equals that. So if it's valid, then we can get which user was encoded in there. So this we can do by user will be, now we can query our user model. So user.objects get. So we want to get the objects by ID. So you can do ID equals. So here in payload, simple JWT uses a key called user ID. So we can do payload user ID. So this is the key it uses to, to encode. But I'll show you how you can actually add custom claims or custom data in the tokens. All right, so once we have this, this should give us the user. Now we need to change their verified property. So here in models.py, you should be able to see that we set up an is verified that is false by default. So meaning right at the moment, this user is not verified. So if I come back to our, to our views here, now we need to do user it is verified so this is gonna be true and by default guys uh, to reiterate you won't have this key unless you define a custom model like we have done so if you're finding this for the first time I recommend you check out the custom model video just so you can know how we set this one up and how you can extend the built-in model class to create some robust user management classes all right so coming back here so we need to change this property and now we can save this. So user.save. Okay, so this should be able to activate the user. Now we can tell them that the account was successfully activated. So return response. So here we can actually add a dictionary and say email, something like success we activated all right so that should be a 200 so http 200 http not http 
Okay. All right, so that should do. But then when we get errors, and by the way, guys, right here, I want to first check if the user is not verified. So I don't want to do a, an extra write to the database when there is no need. So here we can do if not user. So if not user dot is verified, only then we can verify them. But either way, we want to tell the user that everything was good. Because yeah, why not? So here, so if like the token is invalid or the, it's expired or the user has tampered with it, now we can come in here and do what and handle that case. So for us to be able to handle those cases, one of them is going to be when the token has actually expired. So for us to do that, we are going to accept generating the token expired error. So this is going to be expired signature error. All right, so once we have this error, now we can tell them that the link is expired. So we can say maybe error is going to be a 404, 400. This is going to be a 400. So now we can see something like activation link expired. So this is at the point where you would send them a new one. So you would have like another endpoint to request a new link by so where they can submit an email and get a new link. All right, so this is gonna handle the case for when it's expired, but what about when the user has tampered with it? All right, so to handle a case where a user has, has tampered with it, that means it will not be able to decode. So you can check for decode error. So this is gonna be in JWT with exceptions. Dot decode error so once this happens then it means the token is invalid you can say invalid token request new one but hopefully this will not happen all right so once we have this this is already hooked to the urls so meaning that this will do it for that so in the next one we'll come and log in a user and then we'll be able to test out everything so I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. See you then.